Uh, so first off, my name is Dan Baker. I'm the head football coach at Perry High School in Lima, Ohio. Uh, this is going to be my third year coming up as the head coach. I just want to start off by thanking Coach Banstra for having me on and having such a channel that gives the opportunity for all of us coaches to kind of stay connected here while everything's kind of shut down and we can't do too much as it is. Um, so without doing too much, you know, one of the things that I hear a lot of guys talking about when we're at different clinics and things like that is, well, how does this apply to a small school? You know, uh, so at Perry, we had a grand total of last year, a grand total of 22 guys that were eligible on the football team, guys and girl. Um, so of 22 players, you know, some of the stuff that you hear on a day-to-day basis at a clinic, whether it's Ohio State clinic or some other large clinic, you're going to hear a bunch of things that aren't real accurate applicable to a handful of guys that are you know coaching d6 d7 football that at the end of the day have maybe 20 to 30 kids to work with and sometimes less than that so our team background and one of the things i'm really going to get into here is you know how do we do a lot of complex things or things that our kids feel are complex while also keeping it relatively straightforward and simple for them where they can execute it so just a little background on perry uh, last year, we had 22 eligible players throughout the season. Um, we had a handful of different things go on throughout the season. We had a couple injuries here and there like everybody else does, but right about 22 eligible. Uh, we were Division Seven this past year, and we play in the Northwest Central Conference. A little background on our conference is you play people that are full air raid spread. You play wing T teams. You play ISO teams. You play I back teams. You play double wing teams. You got a little bit of everything in there. So defensively, we have to be prepped to be able to play from week to week, literally every style of offense. We had one triple option team we played this past year too. So you just got a little bit of everything back there and how can you get set up to be able to defend all those different things. We started the year off 0-3 of our 22 players, 16 of them. It was our first time ever playing varsity football weeks one, two, and three. So, you know, things get a little complicated there and, but we ended up winning eight straight games, had our first ever first ever football conference championship, uh, first ever playoff victory, and we had three shutouts during that eight-game winning streak, ended up losing to a really good new Bremen team in the second round of the playoffs. So my background, for anybody that wants to know that, is I went to high school at Lakota East, uh, played college football at Wittenberg, and I kind of coached a myriad of places bounced around a few places here and there, working my way around really the Lima area coaching wise until where I'm at presently at Perry high school as the head coach. So really what we looked into when we first started putting in the defense was, well, day one, I asked the kids that were returning four years ago, what they did the year before. And they said they lined up 11 guys and got told to go get the ball. So, you know, one of the things that we really had to fix was how can we execute a real defense without just saying, all right, here's 11 guys, go find the ball. So what can we execute well? What can we execute with speed? Because, you know, everything about defense is you have to do it with speed. The faster you do something, the more ability you're going to be able to have to execute it well and beat another team. And then how can we make a bunch of different looks to confuse a quarterback, confuse an offensive coordinator, confuse an offensive line? And that's one of the things I think most guys forget to talk about is that offensive line can get confused as well. Once you're coaching a game, everybody talks about confusing the quarterback, but how can you mess with the rules of an offensive line from on a play to play basis that, you know, maybe they don't know who they're run blocking on this certain player, who they're supposed to pick up in a pass set. And then how can we adjust week by week with different style of offenses every single week without a bunch of massive changes? So the first thing that we really did is we put in our base defense. We changed up different names for what the heck we call it every single year. But this past year, we called it Buckeye. Um, Our base defense was Buckeye. It basically meant for coaches out there, it meant that the three tech was head up with the running back if it was a shotgun style setting. Our anchor is our strong side end. Our tackles, our strong side defensive tackle. He's in the three tech. Our nose is our backside A gap player. And our end is our weak side defensive end. Um, Our Sam's are passing strength. So we align our front four based on the run strength and our back seven based on passing strength. 
So our Sam's going to go to the passing strength and our Mike and our Will are going to be mainly in the box. You know, there's going to be some teams we play where our Sam's also in the box and we'll get to some of that here as we get going. So really what we're looking for here is how do we simplify it for the kids? You know, are you going to spend 15 to 20 minutes with 23 kids explaining what a three technique is when they've never heard of what a three technique is? And our answer to that question was no. We don't really waste our time explaining to kids the specific technique that they're in. We tell them, all right, you're the B gap. So our three tech knows that he gets lined up in the B gap and that's where he's supposed to be. You know, we have different stunts, we have different fronts, things like that. But for our ability to keep it simple, we tell him, all right, you're going to the B gap. You're the B gap player in this specific play. Now, if we stunted him and ran a slant, he might change ga gaps. If we ran various blitzes, he would change gaps. He knows day one, all right, I got to line up where the guard is and on the outside shoulder of the guard, and that's my gap that I have to go forward in. And that's really worked for us really well with teaching our guys just, you know, basics of defensive alignment. I know some guys teach techniques, and there's nothing wrong with it, but for the sake of our time, we get a grand total of 50 minutes defensively a day on our good days. And, you know, I'm, I prefer to put in stuff and teach tackling coverage plays versus, okay, well, this is why we call it a three technique. And then you get a billion why questions. So this is going to be what our base front looks like. And the first set of film that I'm going to show you is going to be about this Buckeye. Um, the big thing that we started putting in is we have multiple fronts that we'll call based on what another team gives us look wise. And again, like I said, I'll get into that here as we get going, but the first front is going to be Buckeye. Our cover two is our base cover two coverage. We have a handful of different pieces to it, but for right now, I'm just going to show the cover two on the off chance that a handful of teams that we play come in and start trying to figure out what we're doing. Um, so cover two wise, um, we run it as a match. I know some guys refer to it as a palms kind of look. We just tell our guys it's cover two. You know, um, we teach this as our day one cover two. We have a hard cover two. We have a soft cover two. We have a handful of different things, but in general, this is what we typically would run on day one and go from there. So it's no different than most guys probably teach it is your corners are outside leverage. Number one, your Sam, like we said, is to the passing strength. So we're going to say that's to the right hand side. Our strong safety is going to travel with him. Our free safety is going to travel with the will and our mics in the middle. So the corner's job is really the complicated job here in this situation. His job is to see what one's doing, get hands on him if possible, and then see what two's doing. Um, so we teach him if two gets to about eight yards, in theory, it's perfect world if he gets to eight to 10. In most cases, it, our guys have kind of picked it up that when it's about six yards, most routes have kind of determined it to themselves. We've got some good kids that have been playing those two spots for a couple of years now, and they're getting pretty good at it. Though when you see the film here in a minute, you'll see that, you know, we do blow that coverage a handful of times. Um, so our corners are reading number two. If two gets vertical at all, they're bailing also. They got to give a smash call to our linebacker, our Sam or our Will, and that linebacker knows, okay, smash means I have to run out for the hitch route over there. You know, some guys call it a China, we call it smash. So our Sam gets a smash call from the field side corner. He knows, okay, I've got to take the hitch. And I'm now the flat player while the corner is going to bail underneath a corner route or you basically turn it into a double team on a vertical. Our strong and free safeties jobs are to have inside leverage on two. If one and two both go vertical, they're taking two as its man coverage. I guess I skipped that part where if the corner sees two and one going vertical, they turn it into man coverage on number one. Um, our mic is reading number three. If for some reason the running back were to take off straight down the middle of the field, we call it a hot dog route and the mic's supposed to carry him. You know, at the end of the day, as best as you can do, we teach our guys to just run with him. That guy's usually a slightly better athlete than our guy and just force the ball to be a high throw and let one of our safeties come in and help make a play. Will and Sam, in a perfect world, you want to get a little bit of hands-on while not course-correcting yourself too much. If it's just enough to get the guy bumped off his route a step here or there, that would be great. But at the same time, it's high school kids, and at the end of the day, when you got 22 guys, you live with a handful of things, and you choose which th battles to fight. 
we don't necessarily fight the battle of trying to get redirection on a lot of these receivers. We're more willing to, you know, let a guy maybe have a free run at one of our safeties. that has got more leverage on the guy and let those Sams and Wills help out with slants and things along those lines. So that would be our cover two. It's just our base thing that we were going to put in there at the beginning. Um, there's a little more in-depth look at what our rules are. We give this to our kids and basically just went over it. If number three is really complicated on the mic, and that's why we'll get into here in just a second, why we don't necessarily call this very often out of trips. So where we're getting to be multiple here is we'll double call every single coverage that we make. Every single play of every single game, we have at least two coverages called. Um, sometimes we have more than that. And then it's really based on an alignment from the other team standpoint to figure out what the heck coverage we're going to be in. Now, our guys, for being 22 guys that all play both ways, are doing a really good job and have done a very good job for the past three years figuring out which coverage they're supposed to be in. We leave it fully up to the kids. You know, we put it on the coaches as, all right, you got to train them and put them in the right spots to succeed. But we say, all right, take a little bit of the job of the coach calling 87 different coverages out of the game. Let the kids see what's going on and make the right calls. And our guys have done a really good job. We've been blessed with some guys that, you know, take charge of that. And at the end of the day, we've been pretty successful with it defensively. So our first cover three that we would get into, and the one we mainly ran last year, we have four of them, but the one we mainly ran last year was Cloud. And I know some guys are sitting there thinking like, how do you have four cover threes and multiple cover twos and get 22 guys to all know them? It, it's just a matter of teaching it and they're gonna figure it out. You know, sometimes it takes repping it more than once. Sometimes it takes a full day of nothing but that coverage. Sometimes it takes a week of nothing but two coverages. You know, but they start getting pretty good at it. Um, our cloud coverage, I'm sure people have seen it before. You know, it's a corner in the flats. Your Sam's in the hook, just like cover two on that front side. Your field side safety is working to a deep third. Uh, your free safety is working deep middle. Your Mike's working to the backside hook. In reality, most of the time he doesn't end up getting there in the way we play it. Our will is, in theory, working to the flats. Um, you'll see on film here in a second, sometimes our will does a lazy job getting out there and our corner on the backside is a deep third player. So mainly when we're going to call this, we're going to call it out of trips. So I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint and flip over to huddle for you here. So just a basic look at what we're doing here. This is our game against a uh, team up here called Waynesfield Goshen. They were five and zero when we went to play them this year. Uh, so we came up with a game plan for them. You see here, we're going to be in a cover two look. So the way we make our call, so for instance here, we would be in a Buckeye two, two cloud check. So our guys know, all right, if it's two by two this week, we're going into a cover two look. It doesn't matter what their formation is. It doesn't matter anything else, but right now a two by two look. Now, this week, we got even more complicated with them. We told them, all right, if the quarterback gets under center, we're switching entirely defensive front. So it was a different concept for them, but we did a really good job, and I'll show you kind of what we did against underneath and when they got into an eye back because they were a little more dominant running the ball out of the eye, a little better packing the ball out of the gun, so we wanted to have an extra guy playing coverage out of the gun. So we gave them a two-cloud check out of Buckeye, so you'll see here as we get going, right, we've got all the linebackers dropping. You see up top, you got your corner in a trail position because he saw number two. If we go back up here, this guy, corner, two goes vertical, corner starts ch chasing him, helping out the safety. He gives a smash call. Our linebacker doesn't do a great job, but he starts working that direction. Quarterback starts scrambling. We're good to go. Down at the bottom, we don't do a good job getting hands on. The guy's working a climb route. Our mic gets a little bit of a chip on him, but at the end of the day, we get a little bit of help because we get pressure on the quarterback. Corner down at the bottom, sees two go away, carries a little bit, then starts looking for work. Our Sam's able to get in, our defensive end, defensive tackle. We had a little line game going there, and because of that, we were able to force a little bit of pressure, force the quarterback to scramble, be able to move on to the next day. 
Okay, so here we are again, another Buckeye red cloud check or two cloud check. We called it red this past year. So you'll probably hear me say that a handful of times. Uh, we got a pass route. It's literally the exact same route as what they ran the play before that we just showed. We had the exact same stun on. So that kind of works out here. Corner at the bottom is bailing again because two disappears. Our will gets beat underneath, but our mic eh, could have carried it probably a little bit better here. But you see our safety does a good job climbing with number two working vertical. You know, once that guy changes half the field, your typical cover two is going to leave that guy and he's going to work to the other side. And this is a pretty solid two beater. But our safety is working that direction. Yes, it helps the balls in the air. But, you know, we're getting another guy coming to the party. Um, up top, you got your corner seeing two get vertical. Once again, hey, he did a good job too. That's both corners now doing bo both sides of this route. And have both done exactly what they were supposed to do. Our safety on the other side, we would like for a little bit better technique on his back pedal, but he's over the top of number one, two working vertical, and then is able to come help redirect on a play over the middle. You know, good coverage there forces the quarterback to try to stick something in a window. Got a little bit of pressure on him. Window doesn't happen for him. Move on to the next play. Okay, so here we are again. This is going to be our Buckeye. We put a hot call on our mic here because it's fourth down. Um, basically, all that was meaning here was that our mic was going to go right now to the running back and turn it into man coverage. We had seen something earlier in the week where we were like, okay, they kind of like getting it to the running back in short yardage or late game situations. This is late in the game, and we were trying to you know, make sure that running back did not catch a quick pass out of the backfield and try to turn it upfield. So we put him on a hot call, and all he does there is blitz. We lose our middle guy, but again, your middle guy, based on the way we're running this coverage, is literally responsible for the running back if he goes vertical. So we're just pressing that now. We do tell our Sam and our Will that they have to squeeze a little bit more now. If they get inside breaking routes, they have to carry them a little bit more. But, you know, that's the typical risk-reward here that you're going to get by pushing a linebacker for a little pressure. Coverage wise, you've got a post wheel up top. It's a skinny post, but it is a post wheel concept. So I know one of the things a lot of guys worry about is okay, well, who picks up the wheel? Our corner, see, is carrying number two the way he was supposed to, sees the wheel happen because he was looking right at it the whole time. As the wheel approaches him, he's already playing over the top of it. It's a really tough throw. Quarterback's not going to be able to complete that. And if he does, you know, you live to live with that. But again, quarterbacks forced to throw the ball a little bit quick because we get that quick pressure out of our hot call and our backer actually gets a decent little hit on the quarterback, forces a quick throw, throws offline, our ball. Okay, so now it's the same team, same game plan. We are in that two cloud check and here we're in a three by one. So our guys now, okay, so we're going back through it so everybody's on the same page. Two by two, we were in cover two this week. It didn't matter what the heck the formation was. They could have changed different receivers on different sides. It could have been this guy on the line, this guy off the line. It could have been a tight end. If it was two by two, we were going to be in our cover two look. If it was three by one this week, we were going to jump into our cloud look because, again, like we were talking about earlier, if you get it, a cover two look to this, you're now asking your mic to have to run with this guy vertical or you're forcing your backside safety to disregard the entire backside receiver. It, you know, yes, you can teach it in various different ways. We have a couple coverages where we'll run cover two to trips, but this past year we liked our odds with going cloud two trips. Maybe this year we'll change it up a little bit based on personnel, but this past year, this is kind of what we went to. So we're in cloud here in perfect world. Your corner's in the flats. Your Sam's going to be in your hook. He's already basically there. So he just has to get depth. Your mic is working backside hook, but we teach him, Hey, there's trips over here. Why would you run all the way away from trips? So he's going to kind of stay more in the middle of the field. Our will is going to be working in a perfect world to the flats, robbing a slant. If the running back flares out, he'll be responsible for him. Corner's got deep third at backside. Free safety's got the deep middle. And your strong safety has got the deep to this sideline in the bottom of the screen. This is a third and 17. And they're giving a 
it looks like they're giving your basic fake bubble with a vert concept. So quarterback starts scrambling. We get a decent little bit of pressure on him. Our corner does a really good job jumping it. We tell him play aggressive, go get it. Our Sam is kind of where you would have a coaching point here. Our Sam's working over the top of the block, but then that guy turns into a pass catcher, whether it was a delay or whatever. He gets a little bit too aggressive. Our corner's already there. Now we have a second guy on the bubble. This top, this third receiver has now worked to where he's supposed to be, and he's not there. So this vertical route up here is covered by our safety. He's a little deep to start with, but again, he's playing the sticks because we teach our guys to try to play the sticks as best as they can. And eventually we tackle this guy. It's a 10 yard gain, but it's fourth and seven. So we'll live with a fourth and seven every single time. So now here we go three by one again. So I tried to break it up film wise so you guys could follow along. We're still in this cloud look. We're going to be in our cover three cloud automatically based on the look that they're giving us. And again, this is just our safeties making the call. You see five giving it a little bit of adjustment. It could be a cover two look. If you're an offensive coordinator or quarterback, this is still a two shell. It looks exactly how we looked at a two by two. Now we just shifted our safeties over a little bit to account for three by one. Some games, like I said, we won't give them a second call and we'll just play this as a straight two. But for the most part, we'll give them two calls. And in this game plan, we had them switching into a cover three to a three by one look. So up top, we're in the cloud. So we're cloud and strong here. Our corner doesn't get a good enough reroute up the top, but he's sitting where he's supposed to. He doesn't gain too much depth. One thing you'll have when you're teaching this match two along with is he sees that guy get vertical. Sometimes he wants to carry him also. You know, right away, this quarterback looks this way, but our safety initially is working to cover that vertical route over the top. Quarterback starts staring this direction. Safety starts breaking. So our Sam up top, number two, does a good job. Guy breaks underneath him. He's squaring with it. We would like him to squeeze it a little bit more instead of just pointing it and letting people know that it's coming. Our Mike does a good job opening up. Should stay over the top of this drag route coming here. Our Will, this is where I was talking about earlier, he completely blows this coverage here. He opens the wrong direction, tries to backpedal, which we tell our guys definitely never do as a linebacker. There's a reason you're not supposed to backpedal. You play linebacker. So we have our will that does the wrong thing, goes the wrong direction, should be already over here in the flats. Luckily, we get a bad throw from the quarterback. Otherwise, that drag route has our will beat. But, you know, sometimes you have to work with non-perfect coverage. Um, here we are again with our cover three look. We're going to be once again in that cloud look. We're three by one, still same game plan. So now... It's going to be the bottom of your screen that's going to be in the cloud because it's to the trip side. Again, some game plans you can hit. Somebody likes to keep throwing to that backside receiver. You can bracket that backside but without calling it a bracket, without calling it double coverage. You can bracket it by clouding the backside of it if somebody likes throwing to a one guy. So here, our corner does a great job playing the sticks. Again, this is about third and four. Okay, our corner's doing a great job, you know. Would like for him to get more hands on number one, but at the end of the day, doing a great job breaking off a of number one, jumping on this out route. Our Sam, again, this is a guy that's first year ever playing football. Um, he gets a little aggressive here as the quarterback starts rolling out of the pocket. In perfect world, you'd like to see him cover up that third receiver that just ran the deep out playing at 10 yards. You'd like for that to happen, but I know what he's seeing, and I know he would tell me the exact same thing is he saw the quarterback scrambling. And we kind of lost contain early on with our hot blitz again. We call it a hot again for our Mike. He runs straight through and goes after the Mike or the running back. We would have preferred him have a front side shoulder on him. We preferred our defensive end got a better get off and had better contain. He eventually redirects, but I can see why our Sam would have started coming forward because he's technically our, our secondary contain if we lose it there. So corner does a good job, forces the throw. Now pre-snap. Again, it looks like cover two. If you're a quarterback or an offense coordinator, why would you not throw over here to this side, right? Because you have all this space. When I tell you that this guy is one of the best football players I've ever coached, you're not going to want to throw that corner route over here because even then number four is going to go make a play on. 
guy you can ask the guys that played against him or the guys that have seen him play he's going to go make a play on that ball if this quarterback tries to throw this corner or that hitch route over there so again corner does a good job forces a throw defensive end did a decent job redirecting so again this next clip is why i like going the cloud versus going to cover two look two trips because now our free safety can help out Okay, we get a just full on straight vert out of number one on the top side here. The back side is still got all of your your down here at the top or at the bottom of your screen. You have your cloud coverage, right? So your Sam's in the hook like he's supposed to be. Your Mike's working to number three. Your corner's actually over here on that out again. Safety's over the top of the vertical. Can't tell off the screen too much, but they they are there. You see it now. Okay, so really all this was was a one step for the quarterback, and he's looking to throw backside. That was their best receiver. We had our best corner on him. We got just a little bit of pressure in his face. But here, watch the free safety here versus what would have happened in a cover two look. That free safety sees, and he's immediately over the top to come help. You know, is he there at perfect time? No. But as that ball is dropping in the bucket, we have two guys converging on the ball versus if you're in a cover two. His first look is that he's looking over here playing that middle high safety. We teach him to read the quarterback's eyes. That quarterback immediately looked here. He saw that there was only one vertical threat. He can go help out backside. So when he goes and helps out backside, we have two guys converge on the ball. They both swat at it pretty decent. I think at least one guy gets a hand on the ball. I think a second one might've, and we knock the ball away, live to fight another day. No touchdown given up on a one by one. So now the next question that some guys might have is, okay, what, what do you do if they motion, right? Do you trust your guys to switch coverages and switch things even if they motion? And the answer is yes. So right here, we're a little bit misaligned just because they gave us a tight end and a wing, and it was, I think, the only time the entire game they gave us a shotgun with a tight end wing. So our corner is cheated in a little bit, playing almost a little bit of our adjustment call. But here we're in a cover two look. They know they're in cover two. They're yelling what the coverage is. They're communicating it all across. And now we get motion. So as soon as that motion happens, as the guy's crossing face, now you're getting into a trips call over here. So for you guys following along, that should be giving us a cloud. Our guys actually make this call and they adjust to it without so much as thinking about it because immediately we jump into that cloud. Our linebackers do a terrible job flowing and 16, once again, is flowing way too far over the top. He, he he gets chased out on the play action. He should take one step and then come back here and rob slant because he's kind of leaving our corner out to dry here. But our corner adjusts, gets in the flats. He's taking the flats right now. Our Sam, again, a little over aggressive here. He works forward, thought it was run, and then doesn't get his depth. Our Mike technically is too far over. He's playing where the Sam should be playing. Will's playing where the mic should be playing, but in a perfect world, things don't always work, right? So vertical wise, we got 30 down here at the bottom, taking the deep route. He gets beat a little bit, but we've got help over the top. We've got two safeties over the top here for the next two verticals. Everything's covered up. We get just enough pressure right at the right time because those two things go hand in hand. You know, 30 might be getting beat a little bit here. You saw the quarterback look in that direction. If you're looking real close, you know, QB might have a throw there, but we get just enough pressure at the right time, force him the other direction, should have been a pick six, ball bounces just off our hands. Okay, here is just another look at our cloud coverage. So what happens if they go FSL and go their formation and their trips into the boundary? We still play it the same way. The only difference is we leave our will on that side. We don't shift our Sam over. Um, our will is technically a little out of leverage because of it, but if you're going to throw a lot of routes into the boundary, you're going to run out of space real quick. And we've got some pretty good football players. We like to think that'll be able to help make some plays. So here's just a matter of doing your job the right way and being rewarded for it. We teach, if you get blocked, you set an edge as a corner in the cloud. He tries to set the edge ball bounces directly into his hands, quick throw. Receiver's not quite ready for it, bounces right into his hands, and that's going to turn into a touchdown the other direction. You know, it's one of those things that you preach it, you preach it, you preach it. It's one of those things you got to reward too. So our next thing that we're going to be talking about here is how do we adjust our fronts? 
So in our game plan versus Waynesfield, that team that was in the yellow, white, and blue that you saw the first set of clips, they came out in that power eye look. Sometimes they would have a tight end wing with a power eye. Sometimes they'd have a handful of different looks to it. But our adjustment for this week was we were going to add an extra guy to the defensive line. We called this stack. Now, in some cases, we would call stack to be a three-man front also. Your typical 3-4 look, uh, depending on the week, our stack could be a various couple of different things, and we just game plan it with our kids that way. Um, rather than putting in something totally new to them, we just told them, all right, this week the two outside guys are now stand-up players. They're now a 3-4, and everybody widens out a little bit. But for this week, this is the look that we gave for stack for the Waynesfield game. We went to a 5-3. Um, so our Sam walks down and he gets into a 9. He can be in a 2-point stance or a 3-point stance. Uh, we really let our Sam and our end kind of decide on their own. So you'll see some clips where the Sam's in a 2. You'll see some clips where the Sam's in a 3. Same thing with the end. Sometimes he's a 2. Sometimes he's a 3 stance. Uh, our end is going to be in a 5 to the backside. Our anchor just keeps the same job that he already had in Buckeye. You know, they didn't truly have a tight end most of the time when they were in gun and we were in Buckeye there. So our anchor would have been in a five. Now he just stays in the same spot. And we've just added a guy to the edge. The big piece here is we, you have to choose your adjuster for something along these lines, right? Everybody's got those guys that are kind of tweeners. We chose our Sam because he's got long arms. He likes to pass rush. You saw a little bit there where he was leaving coverage to rush the quarterback. So we felt he was a good fit to be that job. Um, our corner, uh, 21, the guy that you just saw make the interception is actually the guy we chose as our adjuster to be a linebacker. And maybe if you looked at the film, you were like, okay, well, why the heck are you choosing the little tiny corner to come play? I'll show you a clip here in a second as to why, but you know, he holds his own in the box and we choose one of our free safety. We put him down playing as a corner. So we still have our three shell look here. We can still play any coverage we want. What we went to was what we call our zone coverage. And really it's just a country cover three and a three over three. Uh, we don't give our Sam any pass responsibility in this stack look because we wanted an extra pass rusher. If they wanted to run a bootleg or something along those lines or a true drop back pass out of under, we liked our odds as a five man rush. One of those guys beating a, offensive lineman that was out of place or really beating a running back trying to pick them up in the backfield. So our stack look, we get into here. So here's why 21 was the guy we chose to do this because he is adjusted in playing a little coverage, get a movement. He likes to hit. So we're going to jump in here to stack. The reason we chose him again, he likes to play football. Okay, so he's in here. All of a sudden, we've got the same exact call. So if you guys are wondering, okay, well, how did you adjust into this one? How did you know when they were going to be in this or that? Small school football guys, you bigger school guys out there, you don't get personnel changes. The same 11 dudes, for the most part, stay the same 11 dudes on the field. My guy in the box can't tell me, well, they're in 12 personnel now. It's the same kids that are running on the field. Once in a while, you'll get one or two guys changing fields. Defensively, you got to be real creative with how you have your guys adjust. It's real hard to get personnel changes. You got to be able to adjust on the fly. It's one difference between bigger school football where guys change personnel and smaller school football. The same 11 you see play one or probably the same 11 you're going to see play three, four, five, and 37. So we adjust here. If we go back to it, you can see our guys actually working into the adjustment. So now we have our adjuster. He's outside the box because he has two threats out here. Mike and Will, corner's now cheated in this side. He basically is a, another adjuster. He's got deep third. Your safety's got deep middle. Your former safety is now walking down the corner. He's playing a little far off for my liking, but it's okay. He's got deep third. Our now adjuster guy, we can call him whatever you want to call him. I'm going to keep calling him the adjuster. He is our flat player. Your Mike's going to be your middle. Your Will is now going to be your flats on this side. It's three over three. Some guys would call it a zone blitz, things along those different lines. We just called it our stack defense for this week of a five-man pressure and a three over three coverage. So our call, for those keeping track, could have been 
we were a formation check and then we are coverage check after the formation check. That does not include your stunts, your blitzes, your things like that. And we have 22 kids that are all able to figure that stuff out. So when you're saying, well, I don't know our guys can figure it out. I promise you as a D6 or D7 school that has 15 to 20 kids, they can. It's a matter of how well you teach it and how well you want to coach it. Because it's going to take time and you're going to have some learning curve and some speed bumps along the way, but you can teach it and they can learn it. So we're here, you see down here, our end is actually in a three, uh, two point stance while our Sam's in a three point stance. So here they're much more power based football team out of under center with an eye back. So we got into a five man front. It was our first play in a five man front of the game. Our linebackers flow forward, you know, two yard gain for a guy that was averaging Per carry going into the game, he was averaging six and a half yards and he was carrying people the whole time. So three yards on a carry there is not too bad. Once again, we're in that stack look because they're under center, and that's all our rule was for the week. If they made it under center, we were adjusted. You know, you can have a bunch of different things. But for this week, that's what we adjusted to. Now you can say, well, what if they started under center and they adjusted back in a formation shift? Then we can shift also. One side shifting allows the other side to have time to shift also. So we could have adjusted the same way. In reality, we told our guys, hey, if they shift, our adjuster now slides back and plays safety. He's a talented football player. He can play safety just like the guy that's playing corner now that was playing safety. Both of them can. We said, all right, well, we're going to adjust. If they do a quick formation adjustment, we do a formation adjustment. Simple stuff. So here we are again. This time, Sam and End are both in a three-point stance, like I said, we really leave it up to the individual kid. Let them do what they're comfortable with. You would like to see a better get off here from the defensive ends and your defensive line in general. But overall, we got the three look, got a three over three shell. We get a decent pass rush here. And this is one of the benefits you get with having a five man front. If in this case, we knew that one of their top pass routes out of under center was waggle. Our defense tackle backside here, that tackle's not blocking him. So he's got a free runner. Our Sam, that's now playing a defensive end spot, is able to beat an offensive tackle that really didn't even want any part of him to start with because he had to help inside. He's going to get downfield before the guard ever even gets there to come pick him up. And at the end of the day, we've got a sack because they never even accounted for that fifth guy on the defensive line realistically. Um, even if they get the ball off, our coverage is spot on all across. We have our adjuster here that takes the flats after he sees play action is right on that guy's hip. Our mic does a fantastic job getting to the drag. We worked on it all week on waggle. Our mic sees, okay, boot gets back to where the drag is. He didn't even have to look for it. He felt it, which is something, you know, with 50 minutes of 50 minutes a day tops of defensive practice. That's something you really look for of. Can our guys pick up simple stuff like that? Our corner backside gets beat a little bit, but luckily he still has help. Our safety's there over the top. Again, got a little aggressive on the play action, but those things happen. You'll live with a little aggressiveness from your corners rather than a bunch of guys that are too passive to come play football. Okay, so here we're five-man front again. Now you got a bunch of guys trying to solo block everybody. Our nose tackle didn't play with his hands well enough. He's getting cut. Our mic slip sliding around, doesn't attack the ISO block with enough power, but now everybody's solo blocked, right? So as everybody's solo blocked, our best defensive lineman is able to make a play and then everybody's able to rally to the ball. Again, notice the guys that are all getting there. You got your Sam, your Mike, your Will, you got your defensive tackle, you've got everybody in there all at once. So here's another game where we use some of that same stack look. So just kind of keep everybody on the board. You know, uh, this week we didn't quite have the same call, but we adjusted and gave a stack look as the week was going on. This is another team that ran this time a wing, a wing T look. And we kind of used the same adjustment here. So as you look, our linebackers are way too close. I would yell at them right now if we were watching film with them because there's no sense in them being four yard, three yards from the ball at best. They got no ability to run downhill and make a play. But 
you know, again, sometimes you live with a little bit of technique stuff that's not perfect when you have 22 people on the field. You can't necessarily pull a guy and say, hey, you're not lining up right. They're playing both ways. So here, you know, we're doing it with undersized guys, so anybody can really do this. This offensive tackle outweighs our defensive end right here by a good 140 pounds. This guy's maybe a buck 30. He also played running back for us. Okay, this kid was an all-conference, all-area offensive lineman. Solidly moving him. But the kid fights enough that he's not able to work to a second level. The lead blocker is not able to work to the next level. All of a sudden, the guy has to bounce it outside. We miss a tackle. But I was listening the other day to Coach Banstra's uh, videos and a guy I played with in college, Coach Merkert, was talking. You know, one of the things he talked about is your DB's got to tackle. Five comes up, makes a tackle, gets off a block. It's one of the big things you got to do as a defensive back. And we strung it out to him. He did a good job making the play. Okay, so here we are again. Same kind of look. Again, guys, this, this kid playing defensive end is a grand total of 130, 140 pounds. He's not a defensive end 99% of schools, but – we knew that he would fire off the ball and play football. Okay, so he fires off, and he's going to actually beat not one, not two blocks, but gets in there and strings out, forces an edge that allows our will to shoot a gap. You know, we teach that if you can shoot it, shoot it. So he shoots, and not only does he shoot, but he gets his helmet right on the football. Ball pops out, and 30 down here is going to dive on the ball. You know, perfect world. He scoops it up, scores, celebrates in the end zone. We ended up scoring three plays later, so it all works out. But, you know, sometimes you'd rather have the ball than maybe bobble it around. So he dove on it. Worst case scenario, we got the ball. So here we are again, backed up a little bit. Again, not great fire off by some of the defensive line, but you're going to get that when you play with the same kids on every single play on every single side of the ball. We had a little bit of a line game going there. Our nose tackle did a really good job freeing up our defense tackle over here. He's a little slow on his loop. But, okay, so the question is, can you still cover out of three by three? What happens if they start drop back passing? Right? 30's beat here, right? 30's deep outside over here. He's beat. This kid's an all-region tight end. He's beat by him. There's no question about it, right? There's no way he's going to cover that. But we've got help right? We've got help. He's getting back there. Now, is he going to be able to maybe make a play on the ball? Maybe, you know, maybe float the ball up there a little bit. Our safety's chasing him down, okay? Because you lose the safety, you lose a little bit of your middle field. Good news is we have our corner on the backside doing what he's been taught, and if he doesn't have a second threat, he chases his guy, chases him, able to force the guy out of bounds before he's able to come down with the ball, Again, you live to fight another day. You're not always going to be perfect, but sometimes you can make a play. Okay, so once again, same kind of look here where we're in stack. Again, guys, this is pre-snap call where we had a adjustment because once in a while they would come out and shotgun. We had a different front call than what we did for a different game, so I'm not showing it, but... So for right now, you can just assume that we could have had Buckeye, the two cloud check, or front check, Buckeye cloud check, same kind of concept. Now we're in stack again. We're a little bit misaligned here. Um, our defense tackle should have shifted over a little bit closer to our Sam. But perfect world doesn't always happen. It's not always perfect. So we're going to live with it. And again, this is why that guy's our adjuster. Right, They run the ball on a quick sweep, quick toss out to that side. Our corner's not as physical as he could be up here with this block. Our Sam's not as physical as he could be with this block over here. But he forces a double team. 21's able to come in, tackle for loss right there. So here we are in stack once again. And again, guys, you can't this kid back here was an all state kid. So I, I will say that we do have a, we had three kids that were all state. So that helps. Don't get me wrong, 
what, 60 back here. You're not going to block him with a backside guy that's got bad leverage on him. And he tries to. They pull the guard. The tackle tries to block down. There's no way that's going to happen. 60 comes running right through. The only way you're going to be able to run waggle is you got to pull somebody different. And you're not going to be able to run waggle with that group of guys up there on the defensive front. It's the same kind of look that you saw a minute ago. And here comes two, again, off the edge, beating blocks. So we have actually two guys there again. It's the same style route concept. 21 down here in the flats again. 30s over the top that side. Five over the top here. Linebackers kind of messed up this time. But, hey, again, you get a sack, you live with it. So back into the presentation. Um, so sample call-wise, you know, this could have been what we called – for that first set of film, you know, we could have called Buckeye stack check with a whatever stunt or blitz we wanted with a two, three check. And you you might be sitting there thinking at home, wherever you're at that, Hey, Whoa, that's a lot of checking for my guys. My guys aren't that smart or whatever. How are we going to get them to figure that out? Correctly? They figure it out guys. I, I can promise you, you can figure it out. They can figure it out. It's really not that complicated for them. Can an offense coordinator pick up on it? Yeah, they definitely can. We've had guys pick up on it in the past. The problem is, is what happens when you switch it again? You can multiple call things for multiple different situations. Just because that game we had two and three checks doesn't mean we can't have a four or a five or whatever other coverage is thrown in there. Just because we use those two fronts doesn't mean you can't use two or three other fronts. You know, you can blitz to a formation, things along those lines that – it's one responsibility that a kid has to know, but Hey, okay, now I know it. And yes, it puts a lot of weight on some of the players, but at the end of the day, that's your job as a coach is to let them be the ones lining themselves up, being ready to play football. We can't go out there on the field as much as we'd all like to go out there and stand back there. Like it's a scrimmage or a seven on seven and line Johnny or Joey up. What rules can you put in place for that kid to line themselves up and be ready to play football? So, that's just a group of what our team looked like this past year. And yes, for those of you wondering, yes, that is a girl back there in the group. Uh, she played a little bit more than some of the guys, so don't worry. It'll be okay. Um, for anybody that wants to contact me or got any questions or any thoughts, issues, things like that, um, you can email me anytime, perryfootball at mycommodores.org. You can find me on Twitter, DM me there, message me on there. It doesn't matter. Coach Dan Baker. And if you need to get a hold of me through phone, I don't, doesn't bother me. Uh, might want to shoot me a text first so I know who you are and not a telemarketer. But it's 513-807-2120. Once again, I want to thank Coach Banstra for having me on, giving me the opportunity to come talk. Hopefully uh, anybody out there maybe picked up one or two things that might help them out uh, defensively in the next couple of years. Thanks again, Coach.